Hi, I'm Jed Dixon. Uh, most of you have been here before, seen me before. This session is, contains about three or four uh, trim tricks, it, not only for stairs, but they apply to other uh, finished carpentry details. Well, they're just little things that I do that I can do on site as a site carpenter that will make a stair sometimes look a little dressier. And uh, some of them involve curb moldings and so forth. So I'm just going to launch into it. And uh, I'll have a little chop saw math in here for you. Uh, so let's, let's take it away. I'm going to make sure that my skirt board is on here at the correct pitch for the stair, which I figured out with my calculator to be 36.7, right? And I'm going to use a digital level here to do that. And it's very important to try to make everything plumb and square, and then try to use all the angles the same, because I'm going to use my theoretical pitch of the stair to do a lot of my cutting and save those expensive trips back to the shop saw. Now, as I've said before, on a stair, the baseboard and the wall skirt and the baseboard and the face skirt really are the same thing. When I build a stair, I want the baseboard in the house on the first floor and the baseboard in the house on the second floor to be continuous with each other. I want the stair to visually tie the first floor to the second floor. So my wall skirt, this piece here, should be the same thickness as my baseboard, and it should have the same molding on it. And uh, when I cut the joint between the two of them, I make it a miter joint. And this is a miter joint. Because the molding that goes on top is mitered, I know that the pitch of the stair is 36.7. So when I cut these miters, I cut them at 18.35 degrees. Just set on my chop saw, as close as I could get to that. And my miters are perfectly tight without having to run back and forth to the chop saw. Also, in a stair, if I have a baseboard along here, I like to have the skirt board here be a continuation of the baseboard. Maybe if I have a molding running along here, I'd ha like to have the molding turn and come up here. I didn't invent this stuff. This is classic 19th century, 18th century carpentry. So I can fit that baseboard in. I know what the angle is, right? This is 36.7 degrees. So can I go to my chop saw here, set it on 36.7, make that cut. And this will go right in here, right? Hmm. Well, that angle there, here, that angle is actually 36.7. But what's this angle here? I set my saw on 36.7 on the saw. Let's think about it for a moment. When you cut 45 on your saw, what angle are you cutting? 45, right? When you cut zero on your saw, what angle are you cutting? 90. When you cut 15 on your saw, what angle are you cutting? It's going to be 75, or else it'll be 105 on the other side. So the numbers on the saw actually are the complement of the angle you're cutting. A better way to think about those numbers is that that measures how much you're going to change the direction of your molding. I cut this one at 17 at 18.3, more or less. And it changed the direction of the molding 18.3. And I cut this one at 18.3. And that changed it by 18.3. And you add them together. And I changed the direction the molding was going by 36.7. What I'm getting at is to cut this right, I have to cut the complement. I have to subtract 36.7 from 90. Fortunately, my saw does that on this side. Anybody? 53.3? Is that right?
Okay, I cut this at 53.3. If the floor is level, there's a pretty good chance that that'll be a pretty good miter. Okay. So I did it with theoretical woodworking, but I needed a little more theory than I thought I would. Okay, well, let's put a molding in there. Uh, we we'll use a big fat one like this. Now, I know what the angle up here is because it's actually, if I cut this at 36.7, that'll fit right in there. How about this cut down here? What's that going to be? Well, it's obviously going to be a really pointy cut. If I just cut this molding like this, at 53.3, it'll go right in there like that, but it won't miter up the underside. Now that's better looking than nothing, for sure. But it wouldn't be nice to cut a really steep, pointy miter in there. Well, what is the angle? If you think about it, this angle here, that's 36.7. So to make, the, and in fact, because I cut the other side, I set the complement of 36.7, 53.3. This angle is actually 36.7. So I really want to cut half of that, 18.35. So I could set my saw on the complement of 18.35. I'd have to be able to pivot my saw all the way over to 70.65 degrees or something like that, 71.65 degrees. My saw only goes to 60, so I can't do it. So I need another scheme. So here's what I'm gonna do. I made a close fence for this saw here because I was cutting Scotia molding, little tiny molding, and I, I didn't wanna launch the little pieces across the room. So, I can put my closed fence back on here. Before I screw it down, I'm gonna set this saw on 18.35. I'm guessing that 0.5, right? But, and I'm gonna make a kerf in it set it on 18 and do a kerf on the other side. The reason I'm doing this is that I can't see the degree scale when I've got this thing on here. So I want to be able to get to it. All right, now we can start cutting this thing. Let me look and see, see which way I want to go here. I want to go on this side. Now I want to cut 18.35 degrees. So I need to put another fence on this saw. I'll use this as my fence instead of this as my fence. And now when I, I'm starting at 90, now when I pivot 18.3, I'm cutting 8.3. If I put my molding on here, you're gonna see in just a moment. I'm gonna hold my molding here, like that, instead of holding it like this. So now, when I turn this, when I make it straight, it's cutting zero. It is cutting zero. When I turn it to 18.3, it is cutting 18.3. And this is not, not too hairy right now. I'm gonna hold my fingers over here on this side here, because I gotta remember where this blade goes. But this is, 
up against the uh, surface here, and it's not actually going to launch itself anywhere. The people over here are probably mostly safe. Now what I do is I got to remove my fence. I've got to swing the saw to 18.3 the other way. And I'm going to drop it right into the kerf that I made. If I turn the laser on, it makes it a little easier. And I'm going to screw my fence on over here. And then we'll recut this. All right. Now, obviously, if I had been doing this on a job site, I would cut this joint here first on a longer piece, and then I'd come back and I'd cut it right here. As you know, this angle here is actually a 53.3 degree angle because I'm going from this 37 to vertical, and so I can just cut it at 37, 36.7, and it would be fine. So there's your real snappy-looking, uh, very acute uh, angle miter.